Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the splendour of Siena in the heat of Tuscany. No more fitting backdrop could possibly be dreamt up for the restart of World Tour racing in this most testing of years. Welcome to Strade Bianchi. 186 kilometres, just like last year, and over exactly the same parkour, 11 sectors in total. As the peloton leaves the shadows of the Medici fortress on the outskirts of the walled city of Siena and out onto the final succession of sectors which will mark the decisive phases of racing, the San Martino in Grania. After they've taken that on, there are still four more sectors, including the Tolfe sector and Pinzuto. 800 metres then of climbing. What's he going to do? Fulsang is not on the front. Wout van Aert is setting the pace and Greg van Avermaet just watching the race and riding exactly his own race at the moment. Max Schachmann as well. Drifting towards the back, Betiol alongside, all these riders together. Betiol now, as Fulsang just opens up a bike length or two, and they're getting across, you know, yeah. or at least Fulsang is. Fulsang there's, is Formula, yeah. there's Formula, no, Greg Van Avermaet, no. Yeah. There he is. Just restores calm at the front of this race. That will allow Formula and Betiol, the two Italians, to come back in. Van Aert. Ah, now Van Aert goes. Wat Van Aert, you can see the corrugated... Uh, ridges all the way up this climb just make it so hard but this man is a cyclocross champion of the very very highest order so the road surface absolutely plays to Van Aert's capabilities and his self-belief and his physical form despite that injury in 2019 is awesome Van Aert has opened up a big gap and Betiol is trying to respond and Schachmann as well moves past Fulsang and Formolo who are in danger of just losing a few positions though Schachmann there's Van Aert they're coming back. Eight, it's it's eight painful, seconds. isn't it? Yeah, eight seconds. That's not eight seconds. No? No. It's four. <laughs> <laughs> it's four. And and what I'm saying is that a kilometre further back down the road, it was five. Yeah. It's between Van Aert, sorry, uh, Van Aert, yep, and these three for the win. And at the moment, they're getting absolutely nowhere. Schaffman leads Formolo around that hairpin now, a little bit of flat, and then turning into Siena, and up the road they go. Big wide roads here, Van Aert just disappearing, he's time trialling himself away, what a versatile rider. He's got 500 metres to the finish line, and only about 150 metres before the road flattens out, and he turns right-handed, and he can start to coast home and to analyse his celebration. One check over his right shoulder just to see that all is in order and that no one is anywhere to be seen. He's done the hard bit and now all he has to do is ride through the centre of Siena. He rode away from a very, very select group of riders on those famous white roads. He made them his own and he's made this race his own. Wout van Aert, the man who has bossed cyclocross until the advent of Mattia van der Poel, comes to road racing and takes his biggest win bar none. A fantastic ride by a great champion as Wout van Aert. His dream goes into fulfilment and he finally has Strade Bianchi. Have a look at the top ten then. Diego Rosa picking up a top ten. Michael Gorgi making it into the top ten. Rick Van Avermaet eighth. Brent Bookwalter, great result for him. Stubar sixth. When you see the time gaps, then you see, wow, that was a hard race. It's like a mountain top finish or something. But it uh, looks from your first participation two years ago that you would win Strade Bianche one day. Did you expect it to come so early? Well, uh... If you get uh, two third places in a row, then uh, of, of course you have confidence to come here. And uh, today was uh, one long day of suffering. Uh, I think no, no one felt uh, like really great. The heat was uh, exhausting, but uh, I really focused on uh, hydration and keeping cool. And uh, in the end, yeah, I, I got something left. But why did you choose to attack with 12k to go? Uh, well. Uh, Maybe there was not really a guy uh, with us that uh, I had to be really afraid of in, uh, in the last uphill, but yeah, I think the attack is always the best defense and uh, in the previous editions uh, I saw that uh, attacking is never a disadvantage here, so I gave it a try in the downhill of uh, Latofe and come, uh, came with a little advantage on the steep part. 
and from there it's, uh, it was a man-to-man -man fight and uh, yeah, it worked. Do you take this as an achievement or just the beginning of something bigger and bigger? Yes, uh, I think uh, a victory in the Tour de France was already really big, something really big, but uh, winning the Strade Bianche is one of the, the nicest one-day races on the calendar, and uh, I really fell uh, fell in love with this race two years ago. Uh, it was my goal to uh, to win this race once, and I'm 25 and I already did it, so uh, really happy.